Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos. And if you're here for a second, third, or fourth time, thank you so much for coming back and getting creative. All right, guys, this could be another fun painting today. So grab your supplies, transfer your traceable to your surface, and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. Now on my traceable, I did go over it with a Sharpie marker, just for those of you at home that are gonna pause the video and draw what you see. If you're utilizing the traceable, you do not have to um, go over the lines with a Sharpie marker. Uh, so now we're gonna start with the large flat brush. We're gonna make a light to medium blue. Um, your call if you want to go a little bit darker and we're going to section it off. I am following the original um, salesman painting and uh, you are more than welcome to kind of follow along and reference my video or reference the original and use the video as just kind of a base or completely switch out colors, whatever you feel like doing. So now we're putting that light blue um, kind of sectioned off um, on the middle portion of his torso. We will be putting some shades of gray and clouds on the top and then um, a kind of a concrete wall at the bottom. So we'll be getting through that. If you happen to be on a stretched canvas, I do recommend that you carry this color around the edges of the canvas. It just makes it look a little nicer when you have that color wrap around the edge. So now we're going to clean the brush. I'm going to move on to a light gray in the top portion of the background. And as I make my light gray, you noticed I just dipped the corner of my brush in the black to add to the white. A tiny, tiny, tiny amount of pigment will go a long way to make your light colors. And it is good to get in the habit of starting off with adding a small amount of pigment and then add more compared to adding a ton of pigment and trying to backtrack. And if you have to mix your color a second or third time, don't stress about getting the exact same shade of light gray each time. We are actually going to put some medium gray and some pure white into this and give a bit more of kind of a, a moody cloud effect. So don't stress about getting perfect colors each time you mix it. With that being said, every time you do mix your color, your brain is taking in that information. And the more that you paint, the more you mix your colors, and the more you hold your brush, the more your brain's going to remember that. And then when you go to paint your next painting, it's a little bit easier. So painting is something that you just kind of keep building on your skills and your comfort level. And that's why I encourage all of my students to find creative outlets on a regular basis. So now that top portion of the background, we do have that filled in with the light gray. Again, if you're on a stretched canvas, carry it around the edges. We are going to be making a medium gray, so adding a little bit more black to our mixture. And you want to go about two shades darker than what you were just using. And I am holding the brush perpendicular to the canvas and kind of tapping the brush and mixing it with the base light gray that was in there um, on the background originally. And the colors will kind of start to blend together. So kind of have fun with this. It's a good thing to kind of take out some stress and frustration, this tapping method. And then here on this next batch, you can see I actually mixed a slightly darker medium gray. Again, play with the different shades. It's okay if yours is a little lighter or darker than what I have on the video. And also with the tapping method, it's picking up the light gray underneath, like I said, changing the colors. But to me, it also kind of gives a bit of that kind of cloud texture um, in the background. So that's what I kind of like using this method for. Now we're grabbing some direct white doing the same thing, but you will notice that as we add the direct white into the background, that white diffuses rather quickly. Um, so you can be a little extra generous with the amount of white paint that you use here for a bit more contrast and a bit more of the pure color showing on there. And if you happen to be one of my first time or beginner painters and you're holding your breath right now, big inhale, relax, you're going to do a lot better than you may think you are capable of. And even if you're not a first time painter, just breathe, relax. I'm really glad you're getting out of your groove, out of your comfort zone and finding time to paint. So now I've moved down to the small medium flat brush. Um, and going back to that medium gray, going a little bit darker for the medium gray than what I was using earlier. 
and we're going to the bottom of the canvas and we will turn this into kind of like a, um, a concrete wall. We're going to add some white on the top to kind of give the indication of the top of the brick wall compared to the front of the brick wall. So um, still using that medium flat brush, grabbing that pure white and the top section using the width of the brush, basically just adding that pure white to it. It will mix with the medium gray to make a light gray. Leave it kind of, um, kind of that high contrast. You don't want to do too much blending on this. So this is a good place to pause the video, take your progress photo, and we're going to move into uh, pure white, and you can use the medium flat brush or the small pointy brush. We're going to fill in the um, shirt on our businessman, on our salesman, and then we're going to grab some light gray, and right underneath the collar and around the tie, we're going to add a little bit of white, light gray to that white. All right, you guys are doing great. All right, so now we're going to make a... Um, kind of a medium bluish gray. So I'm pulling some white aside. I'm using that medium flat brush, adding some blue to it, and then I'm going to add a little bit of black to it. Now the original painting um, had it a little bit darker. So in a few minutes, I'm actually going to go back and make this color darker, but I would recommend um, those of you painting at home to make this color darker. So see there, I put a little bit of paint on the canvas, realized it wasn't as dark as I wanted. So I'm going back and I'm adding more blue and more black. And this is something that you can do at any stage in your painting. Um, it may look one way on your plate, but then when you apply it to your canvas, you're going to interpret it a little bit different based on the colors next to it. So as we work on the coat, um, we're going to kind of take it section by section and repeat the process. So we're filling in the left hand side of this coat with that uh, medium uh, blue gray and then we're going to grab a little bit of black place it in a distinct area to separate the arm from the coat and you'll notice that I place the black on there wipe the brush off and then go back with light pressure and blend that dark color the black into um, kind of into the arm of the coat so I do want you to observe where I place each of these colors and the direction that I blend or move the brush um, once we've laid this color. So now grabbing that black, putting it right underneath the collar and kind of where the two pieces of the jacket meet. And you do want to use light pressure as you're doing the blending. At any point, you can wipe off that excess paint and that will help with a little bit of your um, blending. So now moving on to the right hand side, same thing. We're going to put that medium blue gray in there. And I believe I have to make the color again. And I actually go a little bit darker. And like I said earlier, uh, the original painting is a bit darker than what I painted here, so feel free to make your color darker at home. So again, same thing, filling in that space, then we'll grab a little touch of the black, put the shadows in for uh, where the arm and the uh, torso of the coat meet, and give a little uh, depth that way. Then we'll move into the collar. Here we go, grabbing that black, and I am still using that medium flat brush, and just grabbing a little bit of pigment. You can also use um, the small pointy brush if you're a little more comfortable with that. Nothing wrong with going back and forth. So adding the black, wipe that brush off, and then go back and blend that into the base uh, color. This is wet on wet blending. The next time that you go to paint and you have to do this type of blending, it'll be a little bit easier, a little bit more comfortable. Your muscles will remember the pressure. Your brain's gonna remember um, what how much pigment you use to make the colors. So painting's not about being perfect, but just kind of understanding the process a little bit more each time. And by doing that, you're also understanding your own creative process each time that you paint. So repeating that process again, that medium uh, blue gray, we're gonna fill in the collar. Then we'll go back and add some shadows. And then we will switch over and start adding some white. Uh, here we go, we got a little bit of white already. And again, just observe where I place the white. This is the highlight value, and this gives an indication of where the light source is coming from as you create this painting on a flat surface. So just like with the black, we're placing the white in a few specific areas. We're gonna, um, if you need to, you can wipe the brush off, and then you'll go back and you'll kind of blend this into that base paint. And you want your base paint to be wet. So if you have fast drying paint, maybe do this a little bit faster than I'm doing in the video. 
um, or just again take it in smaller and smaller sections. Totally okay to adjust based on the supplies that you have at home or supplies that you are working with. If you find that your brush is shaky as you're doing this, that means you're holding your breath. So exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas. It'll make it a little bit easier. All right, so now we're gonna add a little bit of black. As I was doing the blending, I lost some of the distinct shadows. So if that happened in yours, you could go back and reapply the black. Um, you can reapply the white if you need to, but it is totally okay to go back and add what you need. We are using the small pointy brush, dipping it in the red, going for a pretty bold tie. Again, full permission if you wanna switch out to a different color. And then we'll actually go back, clean the brush. We're gonna go back to that medium blue gray and we're gonna get the uh, bowler hat in there. And I believe as I make this one, I actually make the bowler hat a little bit darker than I do the coat. And in the original painting, both the coat and um, I believe the hat match each other. Um, no matter whether you're using uh, the video for your reference or the original painting, you are strengthening your power of observation. And that is a core foundational art skill. So grabbing a little bit of black here, putting it on the bottom and the right hand side of the hat. Then we'll clean the brush. We'll grab some white paint and we're gonna put that on the left hand side of the bowler hat. If you are inclined to finger paint to do some of your blending, sometimes that's really nice. Go right ahead and give it a try. You can see that I do put my pinky out to kind of steady my hand as I do this. You can also rest your forearm against the edge of the table. Remember to breathe. You guys are doing a great job. So another place to pause the video, take your progress photo. And now we're gonna move into the skin tone. So I'm starting with the white, adding a little bit of raw sienna, going for kind of a light tan. You are more than welcome to switch out colors. If you wanna warm it up, you can um, add a little bit of red to this mixture. If you want a bit more porcelain skin, start with your white, add a little bit of red. If you want a darker skin tone, you can use more of that direct raw sienna. You can even mix a little bit of black with the raw sienna or you can even use a burnt sienna, which is a reddish brown color. Uh, but by all means, make it whatever color you want. So filling in that full face, the neck, and both the ears. Um, we are leaving the apple, the circle in the center blank. We'll fill that in later. Now we're gonna grab that direct raw sienna and on the right hand side of the face, we're gonna give an indication of a shadow. So again, observe where I'm placing this. Um, on that right hand side, we'll get a little bit on the ear and then we'll wipe the brush off and then with light pressure, go back in and blend it. You guys are doing great. I do recommend as you paint this painting or any painting, um, get out of your chair and look at your painting from a distance of five to 10 feet away. This is the normal viewing distance for most things in life and especially artwork. And the more that you can kind of get into that habit as you're painting to look at your own artwork from a distance, assess, and then go back and adjust whatever you may need. All right, doing great, moving right along. We're gonna do a kind of a, a, a lime green apple, and that was yellow, adding a little bit of green, and I actually thought of like a Granny Smith apple as I was making this. And we're gonna get our first layer on here, and then we will actually do a second layer and repeat this process. So we got that light lemony green on there. Now we're gonna grab some direct green, Again, on the right hand side, we're gonna add that, wipe the brush off, go back and blend with light pressure. You guys are doing a great job. You're transforming a blank canvas into a 3D image. Go ahead, pause the video, take your progress photo. I did let this fully dry before I moved into the next step. And again, we're gonna be doing a second layer on the apple. So starting with the yellow, adding a touch of green, going right over it. And it is kind of nice to see that with the second layer, it's got a more opaque coverage. Um, so with acrylic paint, that is something that you can kind of get into. If you've got really thin acrylic paint, student grade paint, um, a couple of layers will give you a bit more opacity. Then we grab some of that um, direct green, again, putting the shadow on the right-hand side, and then now going back to the lime green, we're adding a stem and a few leaves above um, the apple. And then we'll add a little bit of green uh, for a shadow. You guys are doing a great job. This does not have to be perfect. 
we will still recognize it as um, the salesman. All right, good place to pause your video, take a progress photo. And this part, I did let it fully dry and we're gonna do the outlines. We're also gonna kind of mimic that traceable. You can do all of the lines, a few of the lines, none of the lines. You can add what you want um, for your outline here. I am using the small pointy brush. Pause the video as you need to, to kind of observe where I might place a few lines. And as you are using the brush, um, exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas and that will help with any shakiness. And I also want you to imagine that the brush is a pencil and you're using just the tip of it. Um, and that will help create some of those skinnier fine lines. With a little bit more pressure, you create a bit of a wider line. If you need to turn the canvas sideways or upside down to make it a little bit easier, go right ahead and do that. I do keep it in the same orientation just because I'm filming the video. Do take note that sometimes you will see that my pinky is sticking out and I use that as kind of my pivot point as I'm doing these lines and I'm also resting my forearm against the edge of the table. Again, just keep adjusting and playing with what you find comfortable as you are going through with the painting process and uh, learning how to mix your paint and hold your brushes um, and just get comfortable with the whole thing. All right, you're doing a great job. This is turning out very nice. So we will finish up the outlines on the coat. I can believe we add a few buttons and then the bowler hat needs a little bit of an outline. And then we'll put a few highlights of white um, on here. You guys are doing great. I do recommend that if you want, maybe paint this again in another six months or a year and just compare the difference and you will see how much you have learned from one painting to the next. And that's another reason why I encourage so many progress photos. All right, so clean the brush. We're gonna get, grab some of that pure white paint. Um, oh, I fixed one little spot. Now we're gonna grab the pure white paint and add a few highlights. Again, trust your instincts on the highlights and pause the video anytime that you need just to observe where I am placing it on my painting. I'm really proud of you guys for painting at home. Thanks so much for taking time out of your day. Um, I look forward to painting with you in the future. And until then, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope you are happy with how your paintings turned out. I'm really proud of you for getting creative. As you're uploading these to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email me your pictures, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. I really enjoy seeing them. Um, I try to post them on social media to encourage other beginner painters um, to try the process of painting. But please share this with your community as well. Anybody who is kind of scared to paint, share your experience with them and let them know kind of how much you benefited from it and how much you enjoyed the process. So kind of share, share the fun. Um, with that being said, if you have any comments, questions, feedback, things that you want me to paint in the future, please leave a comment. I try to respond to everybody as quickly as I can and any of the future suggestions for paintings, I add that to my production list and get to them as quickly as I can. So in the meantime, please keep getting creative. Uh, let me know how you're doing. And until next time, cheers.